Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Ahead, it's a matchup of two of the best signal callers in the NFC South. It's Cam Newton and the Panthers taking on Drew Brees and his Saints. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you. We are down on the bayou as you get a look inside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Carolina Panthers. And hello again, everybody. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon here in the booth. And, Chuck, you take a look at this matchup. I don't know if it's going to be one in the trenches from the quarterbacks out, whatever. It's going to be a good game. Oh, without a doubt. I can't wait to see the big fellas have an impact. We're always spotlighting those wide receivers and quarterbacks and running backs and even the defensive backs. But the big guys, I can't wait to see which one tilts the balance for their team. Here's a punter, Thomas Morstead, to get this one started. And we are underway from the Superdome. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. Now the offensive unit for the Carolina Panthers trotting out there. Cam Newton, there's the quarterback of the Panthers. And yeah, Super Bowl two years ago, then the disappointing 6-10 and 10 season. But boom, this year back with double-digit wins, back in the playoffs. And many people wondered what would happen around midseason when they traded his big target, Kelvin Benjamin, to the Buffalo Bills. Plus, he's an excellent friend of Cam. So people wonder, how would he handle that? Well, he got Greg Olson back at tight end. That's Went helpful. back to his number one target. <laughs> they ran the ball more effectively, as did Cam himself. And now he's back looking like the Cam Newton we know. And the Carolina Panthers prowling towards the playoffs. They'll run. This is Jonathan Stewart. And he'll take this one only up to about the 21. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. When we look at this unit like we are now, Greg Olson has become such a reliable target in this league. Loves to be considered the number one option in the passing game in the offense he plays, and he lives up to it. Knows the defense is set for him, knows how to beat them. Stewart. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. He used the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? and 10, Newton. And some room to work. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. First down. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket. 
to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Now a play fake here on first down. Room here to run. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Call it a pickup of seven, and it'll make it second down. carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey and running room scarce here he's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage he got maybe a half yard at most but officially they'll be left with a third and two partner your thoughts on this D-line I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer this is an all-around terrific defensive front hard to move the ball against them on the ground and then when you want to throw it look out here they come after the quarterback And here comes play number six on this drive. They'll try and pick it up in McCaffrey. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. So important that you keep an opening drive going because you want to set the tempo right away. And you and I both know you can't set a tempo if you're punting the football away. Yeah, maybe early. Don't want to be too over the top. But you're right, big third down conversion. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They'll try the air now with Newton. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 11 yards for number 11. Nothing flashy there. The slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. Fresh set of downs here. Newton gives off to Stewart. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. All right, partner, despite my eating habits, I'm not big enough to play offensive tackle, nor am I quick enough. But with the defensive ends nowadays and their speed, those guys have to be able to punch and dance, and it's a tough, tough job to contain them. Second and goal. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. They'll lose a yard and it brings up third. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive. And normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. Now it's Newton. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. Cameron Jordan in there to get him for a loss of nine. And that'll lead to fourth down. They were trying to set up that screen, trying to get that screen to formulate. Took too long. 
He ends up taking a sack, and that leads you to a couple of other questions. Number one, why don't you just get rid of the football near the screen, guys, so that you don't take an interception. But really, the big one, they just took everything away, and he was really kind of flummoxed on that play and ended up taking the sack. So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. This will be, let's see, 38 yards out. And Gano's kick is right through. And the Panthers stake claim to a 3-0 lead. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here come the playoff bound New Orleans Saints led by Drew Brees. Double digit wins this year for them. And you know, this season has kind of answered the question, what could Drew Brees do with a really good running game? Well, he has a really good running game. Well, go back to 2009 when they were sixth in the league in rushing won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So here we are again, and they thought they were going to have a three-headed monster because Adrian Peterson was there when this whole season began. And then you add in Alvin Kamara, the rookie runner, and Mark Ingram, who's been a constant, steady player for them. They get rid of Peterson around week six, and those two just absolutely took off. Ingram's over 1,000 yards as a rusher. Both of them are going to be over 1,200 yards combined from the line of scrimmage. You're exactly right. Give Drew Brees a running game, and New Orleans, heading down the stretch, has a very good chance of winning the NFC South. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. That play never got off the ground because of the defensive front. They owned the offensive line, which allowed the linebackers to see their openings and run straight to the ball. That's why that play just never had a chance. Second down, here's Breeze. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And a look now at the offense for New Orleans. Quarterback Drew Breeze and head coach Sean Payton understand the passing game as well as anyone in the NFL, which led to a rating last year of number one in passing and number one in total overall offense. But the thing that they really do well is get the ball downfield. They understand holes in defenses, find receivers that way. But what they need to add, the running game, back to their mix. When they went to the Super Bowl and won it, they were number six in the NFL, last season, number 16. To throw, it's Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. Trust me, Brandon, I'm not about to try and take your job. I can't do what you do. But that wasn't just three and out. That felt like three and backwards. That's exactly what it was. Uh, you can have my job whenever you want it. Uh, the drive that you're looking for, though, probably going forward, bad start to the ball game. Yeah, not the way to get things going. And here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Panthers will take over now first and ten. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met. They'll start the drive with a run by Stewart. And he'll get this one up to the 26. 
A gain of three, second down. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Second down following the run. This is Stewart again. Trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just big, a big man, big, a huge big, man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> and that is incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. Back deep for the Saints is Ted Ginn. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. They go play action here on first down. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. The tight end Josh Hill was the target, and it's second down. And the starting defense here for the Panthers. Julius Peppers going back to Carolina was really a no-brainer for the Panthers because what they're getting is not just a guy who can mentor their young talent, but they're getting a guy who can still get to the quarterback. Big-time player off of the edge, can also drop down and play defensive end in certain sets, but his best play, when he's standing up and rushing the quarterback, look out trying to block Julius Peppers. Second down now after the incompletion. Breeze gives it up to Ingram, and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. And the Panthers bring in their nickel set as they try to defend here on third down. Five defensive backs. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Pressure comes in, he's brought down, it's a Panther sack. Look, Carolina had a number of issues last year, and that's why they slumped to 6-10 and 10 after a Super Bowl appearance. The pass rush wasn't a problem for them. They still got to the quarterback. 47 total sacks. That was just one behind Arizona, who led the league. Yeah, I think the biggest issue for them, young corners that gave up a lot of big plays. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. <laughs> we'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And onto the field, here come the Panthers. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. 
Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. On first down, Newton. This one complete to Devin Funches. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Newton turns and hands to Stewart. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. And a nice carry there of 15 yards. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. It's lining up first and ten. The play fake to Stewart. It's Newton. His throw incomplete. Greg Olson was the intended target. That'll bring up second down. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Stewart on the counter. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. The Panthers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. A shotgun snap for Newton. On the catch, this is Russell Shepard. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score. We'll head back to New Orleans after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. right and able to push his way forward here for a good little game it'll be a pickup of five on the keeper it's second down well if you're going to run the read option typically you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end and what does that mean what are you looking for with a defensive end but well, you want to play off of what he does if he collapses inside towards the running back then you pull it and take it yourself outside in if he stays outside you go ahead and leave it with the running back in this case pulled it and got good yardage himself 
They go play action with Stewart. Now Newton. And it's caught. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. 19 yards on the pickup there. And now they'll have it first and goal. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and... And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. On any first and goal, the real estate to work with for the offense is really cut down, and the defense knows it. So they often bring heat and pressure, which they did on this play. Got him down for a loss. Not a big one, but any loss of yardage in this position is tough for an offense. Second down, here's Newton. A short game was all he needed. He gets across the chalk for six. Graham Gano on for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And Cam able to take it himself in for the score. Gano out to kick this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. This is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. A play fake to Ingram. Now it's Breeze. And incomplete on the deep ball. The target that time, Michael Thomas. And now it's second down. Well, hey, with this window, two teams that we've been talking about this year that really deserve discussion and more discussion as we continue to go. How about the Rams and the Jags and the turnarounds that they've had this year? They have been dramatic. They've been dominating at times when you look at how they've played. I mean, we just saw the Rams, what was it, week 15? Went to Seattle and decimated the Seahawks to really take over the NFC West. The Jaguars have steadily gotten better throughout the season. I mean, in preseason, the Rams weren't thought of as a team that would make this dramatic a turnaround. Jaguars, they were kind of that trendy, could mm -hmm. they be, but they have been for a number of years. This has been something else, and, and my hat is off to both of these organizations. Now 
Breeze on third down. He finds Coleman. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. plays 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. This is Ingram on first and 10. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window, and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves him with a third down at eight. The Saints on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. Shotgun now for Breeze. He is going to find Hill here. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver is going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. Bust up offense. So pin that one on the rookie right tackle. Remember those days when the right side was simply the run blocking side? Now you're dealing with some of the better pass rushers in the league. It'll make you a little jittery. The penalty on first down backs him up five. It's now first down at 15. Breeze now. His throw caught right around the six. A good pickup after the penalty. 12 yards and it's second down. play this time they say uh -uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage with the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today they've got to think about changing up their play calling some screens some draws some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game you don't totally abandon it but you try and give it a little bit of help
The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and four. Breeze now to throw. His pass caught at the four. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. I know where we're headed on this. Terrific catch. Gets his feet down. Sets up a fourth down and short situation. But I bet we're wondering, why didn't he get to the first down marker running his route? Am I correct? You got to know where the marker is, right? Got to figure it out. I know every receiver has taught that. Sometimes circumstances change it. At least they have an opportunity to make a decision with not much yardage to go. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Jonathan Stewart now gearing up to go on offense as he takes the field. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. This is Stewart on first. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, we all know the guy carrying the ball is going to get the credit, both in the stat line and probably in the newspaper. But guess what? Those guys creating holes, they couldn't feel better about themselves right now. Offensive line, tight end, probably even the wide receivers are involved. They're moving the ball well. They keep it on the ground again to Stewart. And some room to maneuver. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. All right, I've got to be careful here. All right, he's on the plus side of 30. There may be a little gray in the beard, but that's not slowing down his speed as far as he's concerned. What are you saying? I'm on the plus side of 30. Well, if you're on the plus side of 30, you don't know what I'm on the plus side of. <laughs> All I know is that run right there, let us know there's still some life in those legs. Absolutely. Still got a lot of life left in those legs. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? On second down, McCaffrey. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. That's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through. It has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. The Panthers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and two. They'll try and run it. Here's Stewart. And he'll get inside the 40 to maybe the 38-yard line. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. 
Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. This officially a 55-yard attempt. Crossbar bounces back out. He had it online, but it comes up about a rotation short. All things considered, a pretty good kick. Just cruel punishment there to be denied by the crossbar. If you're going to hit from that distance, sometimes you're going to need a little luck. And unfortunately for him, this time the break goes against him. Mark Ingram now gears up to help lead this offense back out there. He's just been looking for some space. You know, I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but... They need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to credit the defense. They came in with a plan themselves. So I think now you try and mix things up a little bit. Get the ball in the hands of some other people. Find some other playmakers. But always let the defense believe that he's still a threat. I was going to say, don't forget about it. No, don't take him totally out of the game. Now they're set up nicely at the 45-yard line after the missed field goal from 55. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. Ingram again. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> We're just two minutes away from sending you to Orlando for Larry Ridley in our EA Sports Halftime Report, so don't forget about that coming up shortly. Yeah, it wouldn't be a halftime without him, and we thank him for doing the highlights. Let's go get a snack. The Saints on third down, two for five to this point. This is third down and 12. From the gun, it's Breeze. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for New Orleans. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. down it's Newton and he gets this one just shy of the 40 they'll mark him down at the 39 and the play goes for 19 yards gives him a new set of downs 
So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. Now a first down throw for Newton. And the tight end, Olsen, right side. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. The completion good for three, and it's second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield, or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right, that run after catch. Here's Newton now on second down. To Shepard, complete over the middle. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. The Panthers on third down, two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. To the air again, Newton. And he finds a man, it's Olsen. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. First down. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. The intended target that time was Jonathan Stewart. And that'll bring up second down. I think there he had to come off of his primary receiver in a big way, just trying to get it to a secondary guy. Unable to get that play completed. Check down, but didn't even have enough time to do that. Incomplete. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Throwing again, Newton. Brought down, but after we saw a flashy little move, stopped short of the 40. Seven yards on the play, and that's gonna lead to a third down. The Panthers on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. Here it's third and three. Out of the gun, Newton. And an alley to run. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. 
Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the right hash, this from 45 yards away. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's a rare two-miss ball game for him now. Normally one of the more dependable guys you're going to find around. Very unlike him. One of the better kickers in the NFL. And I don't think there's anything wrong with him physically or mechanically. He's just having one of those games. will be incomplete one second left to go Thomas the intended target and that'll bring up second down all right need you to check my eyes here this entire unit defensively I think has looked really strong in the first half especially in the secondary they've been cohesive fast to the football we just saw another example arriving there to help knock that one away Shot before half for Breeze. And that is incomplete. So we come upon halftime. Intermission here with the visiting Panthers taking the lead to the locker room. As we send you on over to Orlando where we'll check in with Larry Ridley. He's got our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon. Back to you guys in a minute. But first, it's indeed time for our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Saints haven't played their best football and trail because of it. The Panthers have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Panthers have it midway through the first. Here is Cameron Jordan with the QB sack. This ends up as a loss of nine. The lineup right at the 22-yard line. Coleman's going to take down the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. the second. Newton's going to take it off the right side, and he capped off the eighth play drive with a TD, pushing the lead to 10. Thank you, LR. Appreciate it. A one touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep, and they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. 
Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. And the third quarter starts with a run by Ingram. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Breeze to Ingram on the draw. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. No, that wasn't an explosive run. That wasn't one that took it all the way to the house. But, boy, for a team that's had trouble running it the entire game, that's the kind of run they need, hopefully, to get themselves kick-started. The Saints on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. A tenth carry here for Mark Ingram. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. leaves this one with Kamara and he'll go down right around the 47 this time two yards on the pick up there but it's enough to give him a new set of downs well, we always talk about good down and distance allowing offenses to expand their playbook well second and two that means your playbook's wide open you can run just about anything but a lot of times the play caller he just looks down at his sheet sees the short yardage runs and goes to one of those so it'll be first down here after the run Now they'll throw with Breeze. It's brought in right side by Ginn. And he's brought down. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. This New Orleans team definitely a second-half club a year ago. In fact, they had the best second-half differential in the NFL, plus 64. Well, I think head coach Sean Payton does a terrific job of crystallizing in the half, you know, reducing, and then going ahead and being very specific in their attack in the second. Stop it behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. All right, Brandon, you know me as well as anyone. You know I don't usually advocate abandoning things during a game, but here we are in the second half. I think it's time to change things up. 
Let the running game go a little bit. Let's get to the passing game. And if you still want to get in the hands of the runner, maybe you swing it to him, throw it to him a little bit. Try it that way. Breeze to throw on second down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Brandon Coleman was the intended target. And it's third down. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. And Charles, this infraction is going to be against the offense. False start. Sometimes you have to get up to the line of scrimmage, make sure your team is set before you begin your cadence. And that'll set them back five. Still third down. The Saints on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This is third and 16. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And this is going to be incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. Here's Thomas Morstead now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. Yeah, how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. Cam's going to run. Cam fighting. He lost the football. It's out. And this is picked up by the Saints. And he will bring it back to the four-yard line. And for how much Cam handles the football, he really doesn't fumble a whole lot, but coughed it up there. And I know that a lot of people seeing that play, they immediately go back to the Super Bowl against Denver and Von Miller knocking it free from Cam. But I think you're exactly right. One of the underrated aspects of his game is fundamentally sound when he carries the football. Whether he's in the pocket or actually running it, he usually does a great job of taking care of it. And they'll have to shake that one off. So we've got a challenge. Our referee's going to take another look on the tablet. He's going to be watching to see if the knee was down prior to the ball coming out. Oh, I love what you just said there. You nailed it because if the ball's shifting or moving before the knee or any other part of the body hits the ground, then that will be considered a fumble. possession now it's second down cam's gonna run the option right and maybe the wrong read there as he's gonna go down immediately so he loses three yards there now third down 
And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. The Panthers on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and 17. From the gun, here's Newton. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Tyler Davison able to drop him for a loss of two. And that'll bring up fourth down. I remember when I was a kid and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel oh. so, I could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. Okay, how much were they? A dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. Here's Michael Pilardi now. Standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. Here's Ginn. Oh, he will not go down. Have to retake those ankles. A big boot that time. 57 yards the official distance. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They'll try to get the ground game going with Ingram. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Second down, Ingram. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Well, so far, this game has gone the way the defensive coordinator had hoped. They've dictated things. They've not let them run the ball very well at all. They gave up a nice game there. I doubt it'll back off their confidence. They've played so well throughout this entire game. The Saints on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and four. Snap comes at one, and now Breeze. And Ginn's got it. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. Breeze to another longtime vet, Ginn, for the New Orleans first. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down, and that's what he just did. Breeze now on first down. The throw to the left side caught by Coleman. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. He's going to throw. That's out to Hill, right side complete. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. 
Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Again, it's Breeze. And that is incomplete here. So many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. The Saints on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and 11. Now, Breeze again. Again has it complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. 15 yards through the air and a first down. All right, say it with me now. There are a lot of different words we come up with. Maybe we go back and forth after that play, getting his toes tapped down to make that catch. Crafty. Yeah. Wiley. Oh, definitely. All the veteran names. You name it. Has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make that type of a catch. handoff it's Mark Ingram and he's going to take this one down to about the 23 yard line give him three on first down it'll set up a second and seven now it's second and seven To throw, it's Breeze. Caught by Snead over the middle. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Breeze finding Snead there for a same first down. comes to the line now first and ten they'll run it now out of the gun and he'll be taken down here at about the 11 two yards on the pickup there it'll be second and eight Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. On second down, here's Breeze. His pass caught with the four. And he'll take it into the end zone for the Saints touchdown. Michael O.O. Matawanui. An 11 yard touchdown. And the Saints are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Will Lutz on for the point after. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. So that one a long 11 play drive and it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans.
So a tie ball game here as the kicks away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. Carolina getting set to take the field. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and try and think with them here. Try and play field position maybe, turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> They go play action here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. We've been together a little while now, partner. How often do we actually describe tight ends as nifty? Because that's what I think of when I see Greg Olson on the field. His ability to run routes, create space and separation, and make those catches down for yeah, Sure, consistent. The numbers the last couple years almost identical and both over 1,000 yard seasons. So the offense has it first and 10. Comes to Stewart and able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. So the offense looking at a second and eight. Cam's going to run the option right. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know. Defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. The Panthers on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 10. A shotgun snap for Newton. And that is incomplete. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there and handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. They'll run 
with Ingram here to begin the drive. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Another carry for the workhorse tonight, Ingram. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and we'll still get the first down. They love being physical. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now a handoff to Ingram. And he'll get this up to about the 40. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes, the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there, about to break a big one. Second down following the run. Off the play fake to Kamara. It's Breeze. Blitz coming and down he goes. Ben Jacobs coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. From the gun, it's Breeze. Caught on the left side by Ginn. And he is down deep into Carolina territory. A big play for the Saints on third down. 54 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. here on first down and it's caught the tight end hill and he'll be brought down this time at the five yard line give him nine there on the first down completion seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends especially the ones running around the nfl nowadays makes me glad i didn't make it in that league i would have had a really difficult time but now you get to sit up here with me yeah and that's fun isn't it and what a really nice game right there on first down for them brings up a nice second down for them Complete. And there's a good opportunity to just want to ride there. A drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. Oh, 
The Saints on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. They're up against a third and one situation. Breeze to throw again. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Brandon Coleman, a five-yard touchdown. And the Saints have taken the lead. Well, we've seen some lead changes, and it certainly appeared that one of these squads was in full control of the game, but that's not the case after that touchdown. Yeah, they erase a two-TD deficit here to grab the lead. Lutz to try to add the PAT. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17-10. to 10. So that drive goes eight plays, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Carolina getting set to take the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Draw play, Newton to Stewart, and he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Brandon, that play certainly felt like what I call a tendency breaker. First and 10, they dial up a draw play. That's not a normal situation, but give credit to the defense. They weren't fooled at all and really finished off the play. And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. From the gun, Newton. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn to an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. The Panthers on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This will be third and five. Now it's Newton. And he finds a man. It's Olsen. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Newton to Olsen there for a Carolina first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. First down, Newton. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Give him eight on the play, and it'll make it a second down. Just two yards to go here on second down for the offense. Right, 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 right. 
Cam's going to run the option right. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. He'll grab three yards on the play, taking it himself for the first down. And what a weapon to have when you can use your quarterback as a short yardage runner and pick up first downs. down throw for Newton and he's got some space here and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs First down. And Olsen over the middle. And he'll get this one down near the 20 yard line. Personal foul. Placement. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. zone opportunity. Now whistles. Flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. So that'll back him up five. And here comes play number six on this drive. They'll try the air now with Newton. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. They have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. On second down, they run with Stewart. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Just a yard on the gain there, and that leaves him with 14 yards still to go on third down. The Panthers on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This is third and 14. Now whistles, flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. Ball start, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. The Panthers on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This will be third and 19. Now Newton. And probably the wise decision there. No one open, he just throws it away. And that keeps the field goal on the table as it's fourth down. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? 
Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, this from 37. And Gano's kick is right through. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. So an interesting call there to take the three. I guess they're thinking their hands were tied, but in the fourth quarter, that field goal, it really might not help them much at all. Yeah, I mean, you still need a touchdown. Another field goal does you no good, so it'll be interesting to see what the media reaction is if the score stays where it is. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. On first down, Breeze. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Mario Addison in there to sack him for a loss of six. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. to throw on second down. And Thomas has it. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Completed pass on second down. Now it's third down as the defense looks for the stop. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Oh, incomplete, nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Carolina getting set to take the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. First and ten, Newton. Finding room at the 30. Caught left side by Funches. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains.
So here we go, first and ten now. To throw is Newton. He hits Stewart in the flat. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Give him three on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. And, of course, the quarterback in this situation, he's realizing time is becoming a factor. Let's see if they can get some points on the board here late. To throw on second down is Newton. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. And let's see what the defensive coordinator may have up his sleeve here to try to get this final last stand and win this football game. Now Newton on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Bird. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Fresh set of downs here. Throwing again is Newton. Quick throw that's complete on the inside slam. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Another 13 yards there twice in a row. And they're on the move. Another first down as well. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags. And I believe this is going to be a first down. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. the offense lining up first and ten. He'll look to throw. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Now whistles. Flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Keep the feet in bounds. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. 
That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. The Panthers on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and seven. They'll look to throw. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Call it a gain of three. And that's going to make it fourth down. Oh, and now movement and a whistle. And they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. So that one will be accepted. Down four late, got to go for it here on fourth down. He's back to throw. And he can't get a throw off, he's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Sheldon Rankins able to run him down for a loss of a yard. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. They run. It's Mark Ingram. And he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Let's see what the offense comes with here. Second and eight. Ingram. And he's got Rome. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Panthers are going to take another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. The Saints in victory formation now as they'll take the knee. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. The Saints in victory formation now as they'll take the knee. Hey, hey, hey. 
Drew Brees with a kneel down, and that ought to do it. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Saints are winners here as well.